Hey, how's it going? So there's currently a Steam Next Fest happening which is running from the 9th through to the 16th of October. It's always a great time to check out any upcoming games you're looking forward to or to discover something new. I think there's something like a thousand demos available in this one, so there'll no doubt be something for everyone. A load of games off my wishlist got demos, so I'll give in 10 of them a go and I've got some impressions here for you. Don't forget to wishlist any of these if you like the look of them as it really helps the devs out. Alright cool, let's get into it. Yes we know that Mr Hills, please continue. First up, we have American Arcadia, which is a cinematic puzzle game that combines a 2.5D platformer and first person game to tell the tale of a thrilling escape. Yeah, so this one is a Truman Show thing going on that I proper liked. The story is centred around two playable characters, Trevor and a mysterious woman who is helping him. Trevor is at first unaware of his predicament of living inside a reality TV show, until it's revealed that his co-worker, who was apparently on holiday, is actually dead. What? Gus is... dead? What on earth? From here it spirals into chaos with Trevor discovering the truth and then being forced to try and escape. The game has some great stylistic choices with how it's telling its story, from the dual perspectives of each character to an interview that is taking place with Trevor as he recounts certain events. I also like the style of the graphics, the low poly textures make for an interesting looking game and it's a great fit for the retro futuristic look of Arcadia, the reality show city that the game takes place in. Gameplay wise, Trevor's sections seem fairly standard for this type of game. You either run left and right, jump across gaps and over obstacles and can pull various physics based objects around in order to solve puzzles, all while trying to avoid being caught by Arcadia's security. What helps to mix this up is when the woman who is helping is also able to alter the environment. Hey, uh, hey, I, I can't see anything in here. Oh, jeez, man, just hug your teddy bear real tight while I try to turn on the lights, okay? Uh, is that better? Now let's try to find a way out of here. She can help Trevor by moving various things around to assist with puzzles and to give him an edge during a chase sequence. In these moments, you actually have control of both Trevor and the woman at the same time, which is pretty cool. Mother oh, this shouldn't be happening. Oh, hold on a sec, Trevor. I I'll be right back. When playing as the woman directly, the perspective changes to first person and you're doing a bit of corporate espionage around the TV show offices in order to help Trevor in some other way. The gameplay here is much different and helps to add some variety to the game overall. The demo did have a few stuttering issues for me, transitions between characters and scenes were a bit laggy at times and some of Trevor's animations felt a bit stiff. Overall though, I enjoyed what I played. American Arcadia releases on the 15th of November 2023. Turn yourself in or you'll be neutralised. Another crab's treasure is a pretty funny take on a Souls-like game. You play as a hermit crab who is able to pick up a variety of different objects to use as its shell which is essentially your shield. Each type of shell has unique stats and abilities which can change up how you play and there are seriously loads of these. The game takes place in a kingdom on the verge of collapse and the hermit crab is on a treasure hunt to buy back his repossessed shell. The kingdom in question is the ocean and I guess it's in the state it's in because it is absolutely full to the brim with human crap all over the place. So just like in real life then, you even use microplastics to level up and the loading screens have the recycling icon on them. So the devs are definitely trying to get a message across with this one and rightly so. And I actually found this underwater setting to be a good fit for this style of game and makes for some interesting places to explore. It also helps that how you get around is pretty good as well. There's some decent platforming mechanics here and you're able to jump and swim which acts as a sort of glide, use a grapple to reach higher places and climb around on fishing nets. All of these different options make exploration quite enjoyable. The combat has all the things you'd expect from a Souls-like and it's mostly done well. There's dodge rolls, dashing, blocking and parrying, all that stuff. I did find the dodge to be pretty inconsistent, but maybe that was a skill issue on my part. The enemies do attack pretty fast though, so I found that taking the hits with the shell or going for the parry was more effective. The shells in general add a lot of variety to combat and are a really nice addition. There's loads of different effects depending on which one you have equipped and a decent one I found was this soda can that had this depressurize ability. This sprayed out bubbles that homed in on enemies and I found it particularly useful when fighting bosses. I went into this thinking it would just be a bit of a laugh, but there's a surprisingly competent game here. It's one I'll be keeping an eye on. There's no release date yet, but it's coming sometime in 2024. This next game is called Europa and in it you play as an android called Z who sets out in search of answers in order to solve the mysteries in the ruins of a fallen utopia and discover the story of the last human alive. 
The story is told by collecting items and notes that are scattered throughout the world and what a gorgeous world this is. This game was quite obviously inspired by the Studio Ghibli films and it does look really stunning in motion. On more than one occasion I found myself just stopping and having a look around because of how good it looked and it also helps that the soundtrack is really lovely too. Music and visuals just work well together and create this really relaxing vibe. The gameplay comes down to overcoming light puzzles and platforming sections in order to progress forward to the next area. You explore by running, jumping and gliding and the jump distance and glide time can be increased by collecting these optional special items. Some of these require you to find ways up to the tops of buildings and can also be hidden away inside them. I don't think there's any enemies or combat, not from what I've seen so far anyway, but it doesn't seem like this would really fit the tone of the game. Something that I did feel was a bit out of place is the narration that goes along with each note that you find. The voice acting's fine, it just felt like it was unnecessary and goes against what the game is going for, but maybe that's just me. The demo was around 20 minutes long and I'd be interested to know how long the full game is and if its gameplay can sustain more than a few hours. It's enjoyable, but there's not a huge amount of variation to it, though perhaps this changes as the game progresses. It's due out in 2024, but currently there's no specific date for it. This is Go Mecha Ball and it's an action roguelite where you play as a mech that can transform into a ball and this one really impressed me. What makes this game special to me is the movement. This game feels bloody fantastic to play, it looks so fluid but most importantly it feels incredibly responsive. It reminded me of pinball and the way the ball gets fired all over the place in that but the difference here is no matter how fast and frenetic it gets you always have a high degree of control. When you're in the ball you're able to zip around using the speed pads that are all over each stage. You are also able to boost which is an ability to start with that's on a cooldown which you can see at the bottom of the screen. The boost is useful for zipping out of the way of enemy fire but it can also be used to attack enemies as well with the added effect of delaying their attacks which is handy. When you're out of the ball you're a bit slower and can't dodge attacks as easily but you do have access to the weapons you've picked up and are able to deal out a lot more damage. As you kill enemies they drop currency and the amount they drop is determined by the current bonus modifier which is on the top left hand side of the screen. This can be increased by killing things in quick succession. There's also two types of currency, gold and blue coins. Gold coins are used at the shop during a run to buy stuff like health and ammo and the blue coins are used to unlock enhancements permanently back in the main hub which then appear in the next run. This is where the roguelite stuff comes into play. There are three types of enhancements to unlock and these are upgrades, abilities and weapons and there seems to be a load of variety to each one. Each time you complete a stage in a run you get to choose one of these upgrades as a reward which will then determine how your mech performs and will make each run feel different. The game looks and runs great and I had no issues but I did find that the camera was a touch close at times and considering how much stuff is going on an option to be able to zoom out a bit would be useful. The game is apparently being made by a dev team comprised of industry veterans and I think it shows every part of it seems high quality to me. There's unfortunately no release date for it yet but I'm looking forward to this one and I highly recommend checking out the demo. in the list is Jusant and I'm cheating a bit here because I actually played this demo a few months ago but it's back up as part of Nextfest so I guess now is as good a time as any to talk about it. This game is being made by Don't Nod, the developers who are most known for the Life is Strange series which I am also a big fan of. They have made other stuff such as Remember Me and Vampire but the general consensus with those seem to be that while the settings and characters are really interesting the games suffer in the gameplay specifically when there's combat involved and I tend to agree with this. However Jusant is quite a bit different to those other games and is described as an action puzzle climbing game. I don't think there's any combat at all in this one which will no doubt work in its favour. In terms of the story there's not much explained at the start but to me it appears as though the planet's water has disappeared and the answers as to why this has happened might be at the top of an impossibly tall tower. The main character is also travelling with a mysterious creature which I think will likely play an important role in the story. There's not much spoken dialogue as I never saw another person in the demo but the environmental storytelling is strong and there's stuff like notes to find that give background information on the the current area you're in. There are also these seashells that let you hear echoes of the past which is quite intriguing. Wow. 
The world feels mysterious and the sheer size of the tower and parts of its architecture gave me big team eco vibes, which leads me to the gameplay. Jusart is all about climbing and I personally love it when a game goes all in on interesting movement mechanics like this. You climb by using the left and right triggers which correspond to each hand. You then have to keep one of the triggers held down in order to release the other to search for the next piece of climbable wall. You also need to monitor your stamina as this gradually reduces over time and I can see this coming into play much more as the game progresses and the climbs become less lengthier and more involved. There's also a variety of different gear that can be used to assist in climbing such as the rope, carabiners and pittons. The rope is a lot of fun and allows for abseiling down and climbing up to different areas along with wall running and swinging. The creature that's in your backpack is also able to interact with parts of the environment in surprising ways which introduces another element into the climbing. And you know I could go on about this game but I'll just leave it here and say that I really enjoyed my time with the demo and it's hitting a few key things for me. Don't not excel at creating vibes and they seem to be nailing it in this. I can't wait to play more when the full game releases on the 31st of October 2023. Laika Age Free Blood is another game that instantly caught my attention when I first saw the trailer for it. It's a western inspired Motorvania set in a post apocalyptic wasteland where you play as a mother coyote who descends into an endless path of vengeance to take back what her people lost. The game is pretty brutal but it's got a strong visual style and there are animated cutscenes that take place at key story moments which add something extra to its presentation. The soundtrack is also worth mentioning because everything I've heard so far is pretty amazing. I'm not sure if this is all original music made specifically for this game but I won't be surprised if it is as it perfectly fits with what's happening and enhances the moody atmosphere. In terms of its gameplay what really sets this apart is that it's a metroidvania that has you using a motorbike to navigate through its world. This makes its core gameplay quite a bit different to many other metroidvanias and in turn makes the controls take an extra bit of time to get the hang of. You're expected to pull off flips and land the right way up, brake at the right time and change the direction and elevation of the bike and you're doing a lot of this stuff at the same time which means there's a lot to keep track of. Throw enemies into the mix and it can get a bit messy. The bike is also used in combat to both block bullets and deflect them back at enemies and you start with a pistol that has two shots. You aim with the right stick and there's a limited slow mo that kicks in which is pretty helpful. Weapon ammo and abilities such as deflecting the bullets are restored by doing front and back flips. Literally everything in this game revolves around the bike. And I did find that over time the controls started to click and I was able to combine riding around with taking out enemies and landing jumps and it all started to feel great. On top of this, there is just a lot more to this game than I was expecting. For example, there's this whole village area that acts as a hub that you can return to. You can chat to the villagers, pick up optional quests, craft new weapons and also cook food to gain temporary upgrades. I actually stopped playing this demo after about an hour, not because I wasn't enjoying it but because I didn't want to have to start again in the full release. However, I have since seen a post from the devs that any progress made will in fact transfer over to the full game which is a great incentive to give the demo a go. And there's not long to wait for the full thing either as it's coming out on the 19th of October 2023 which is next week. This next game is called Mausolina and it's by far the most abstract game on this list. I also keep calling it Mona Lisa, which I think is intentional. It describes itself as a hostile interpretation of the immersive sim where nothing is planned and everything works. And what does that mean? Well I'm not 100% sure, but every scenario in this game is random, from the layout of the puzzles to the items that you're given to complete them. Its simple visual style reminded me of Baba Is You and to be fair, this game broke my brain just as much as that one did. The main goal is to complete puzzles by collecting coins that open a portal, which you then need to return to in order to exit the stage, but it's far from that simple. That's because, as stated before, not only is everything random, random but everything is also physics based and everything interacts with everything else meaning every puzzle is unique and can be completed in many different ways. This means that it's entirely possible to be given items that might be useless for the puzzle you're in to then getting items that completely trivialise the whole thing to everything in between those two extremes because anything can happen. And what the random nature of all this leads to is that it gets you thinking creatively because you don't really have a choice to do anything else. It's always down to the player to figure out the solution no matter how out of the box it might be. If this all sounds a bit mad 
bad is because it kind of is. The best advice I can give you is to go and check the demo out for yourself. I found it to be both confusing and clever. Oh, and the full game is out on the 17th of October 2023, which is next week. Paper Trail is up next and this is a top down puzzle adventure game about leaving home set in a foldable paper world. They've really got the papery look down in this game, it's stunning to look at and I also really like the way the environments and the characters are animated. The game starts with the player character whose name is Paige and I've just realised the name speaking to her parents about a storm that's recently happened. She then sets out to check up on the neighbours and see if everyone is alright. This is where the folding mechanic is introduced, each section of the world is set on a tile or should I say a page? Get it? Anyway, you're able to fold the game world onto itself to reveal the other side and not only is this incredibly cool, it's what you use to solve all the puzzles in the game. Each section of the world is able to be folded from the sides to the edges with the main goal being to create a path for yourself. It's honestly a pretty mind blowing mechanic this, I'm a big fan of the folding if you can't tell. At first the game eases the player in with a few puzzles that have pointers on where to fold and honestly this is a good call because as I found out, this game gets pretty tricky and soon enough you'll be folding the world to connect bridges, line up certain things in the environment, push and pull objects across the folds and much more. And you're also unable to fold over any other folds you've already made, so you need to take this into account as well. Some of these puzzles had me stumped for a good few minutes but it was always satisfying when I figured them out. I really enjoyed this demo and it's another one I'd urge you to try yourself as it seemed dead good. It's coming out in 2024 but there's no confirmed date yet. Saturnalia is a single player survival horror game where you play as a cast of characters that are exploring an isolated village haunted by an ancient ritual. It was the visuals in this one that caught my attention, it's got this comic book style cell shading that looks great. The game follows four characters whose stories are all interconnected and if they all happen to die then the village changes its layout, so repeated playthroughs will never be the same which is pretty cool. You start as this woman called Anita who's a geologist working in the mines under the village. She had an affair and got pregnant with someone and so is returning to collect her things and move away. Gameplay seems to consist of exploring areas and searching for items to interact with. There is also an emphasis on figuring out the right way to get to places around the village. There are maps to memorise where somewhere is, but this only lasts for a few minutes. I think the idea here is to eventually familiarise yourself with the layout of the village so you're not relying on the maps and then you're able to get around quicker, but then you risk this knowledge if you lose all your characters and then the village rearranges. There's also a detective investigation board which gets filled in with people, places and items of interest and these get linked together if there's a connection. Connection. Your active missions are also stored here and I get the feeling that this is something else that might be affected by the town rearranging. When it turned to night, the village took on this eerie purple haze and became a bit more difficult to navigate. You can use matches to light up the immediate area but these are in limited supply. Oh, and there's also a creature stalking the streets which isn't ideal. On one occasion it cornered me in a church but I was able to dodge it and hide in a confession box until it left. I eventually ran into another character who I then took control of and there was a flashback to a few hours earlier which showed what he was up to. I wasn't expecting this and I found it added more intrigue to the story as each character has their own reasons and motivations for being in the village. This other character had his own investigation board and I think it merged with Anita's as well. He also had a camera that was able to stun the creature so it seems like each character will have unique abilities. The demo was on a 40 minute timer and ended shortly after I took control of the other character but I was certainly intrigued by what I'd played and I liked all the different things the game was doing. It's apparently releasing in 2023 but there's currently no specific date. Lastly we have Sentry. This is an FPS tower defence game where you defend your spaceship against an alien threat. You do this by setting up various traps and turrets and using environmental destruction to survive waves of enemies and it can be played either solo or in co-op. 
The reason you're on a spaceship is because Earth has become overrun by aliens and so you're fleeing, but they're also boarding the ship you're on to destroy it from the inside. The ship has human cargo aboard, which is why you, the sentry, have been activated and need to protect it by setting up defences. You start by choosing your loadout. You have a specific number of slots and each piece of gear takes up a certain amount of them, so you're limited by what you can take in. After you've chosen your gear, you're loaded into the stage to begin the preparation phase and you're given a time limit in which to set up your defences before the aliens breach the door. Once your defences are down, the aliens will begin their assault and start making their way towards the goal. What's different about this tower defence game is that you're able to get involved and chip away at the enemies alongside your traps and turrets. The shooting feels decent, with good feedback and sound effects on the guns, and there's a few different enemy types that require certain traps and tactics to overcome. Any defeated enemies drop currency that you can then use to buy additional traps to help with the next wave, and then it's rinse and repeat. The demo only had two stages to play, but the Steam store page says that there will be multiple short and replayable campaigns with persistent upgrades to use on future runs. It also says that the campaigns will be dynamic, meaning that even if you're defeated, you'll be able to make tactical decisions on which ship systems to defend next. The game seemed fun even in this limited capacity and I can imagine it would be even more enjoyable in multiplayer. There's currently no release date but it's apparently launching into early access soon. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it and more than that, I hope you saw something that you like the look of and go and check it out. If you did, don't forget to stick it on your wish list as it really does help the devs out. If you've played any interesting demos in this next fest, let me know in the comments below as I'd love to give them a go. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Cheers.